Hey, namaste, bitches. It's Teresa Judice here, and I'm here with my co-host, Melissa Feaster. What's up, Teresa? What's up, our namaste bitches? We are back. Another fabulous Wednesday. I'm so happy to be here to see you. Holy crap. Yet another crazy week of things going on. I know there's like so much going on. I mean, I feel like it is not your season hasn't even started yet, Teresa. And I feel like everything Jersey is just blowing the hell up. I know. I guess we're going to be like um, Beverly Hills. It's going to be crazy. (laughs) You know, it is. Beverly Hills was, was, I I feel like the dust is just, I mean, it's been a forever and the dust I feel like is kind of just settling from Beverly Hills. And now it's you guys like creating this havoc of madness. But you know what? The crazy thing is, it's not even you. It's like all like, for example, I was just reading. You and I didn't even get a chance to talk about this yet. All yeah. this Jacqueline stuff. Oh, yeah. I have seen a little bit of it. Yeah. I mean, do you know the story between me and Jacqueline? I mean, I remember you guys being like besties. Yeah, we were. We were besties. Like we were like like so close. Like I met Jacqueline through her sister-in-law, Dina. That's how I met her. We totally connected. Um, I remember Gabriella and CJ, they used to hang out. We used to be with them all the time. Joe and I were with Chris and Jacqueline all the time. Got along great. Like, yeah, I mean, I really considered her my best friend. And it wasn't just for the show. No. Yeah, no. So we all hung out before the show. Like we were real, real friends before the show. And like Dina recommended me for the show. And then um, I was really close with Dina and Jacqueline, like before the show started. And then Caroline, we really didn't hang out with Caroline. Caroline was, um, you know, Jacqueline's sister-in-law, obviously, and Dina's sister. And Jacqueline recommended Caroline. And then Danielle, she went to the hair salon that they went to, which was called Chateau and Franklin Lakes. Right. So that's how we all started. But I was really really friends with Dina and Jacqueline. Like we were real friends. So what do you think, you know, after all these years, you know, Jacqueline's coming out and she's just out there now on social. And she's really saying a lot about Melissa Gorga, that Melissa Gorga was a liar. Well, this is the thing. Let me, and then I'll give you the backstory on me and Jacqueline a little bit more. So yeah, season one and two, like Jacqueline and I were great. Oh my God. I, like, I know she was trying to get pregnant, you know, have another baby. And I was like praying for her. I really wanted her to have a baby. And then we ended up getting pregnant together. And I was so happy for her. I really was. Because, you know, when you love someone, you, you know, you want the best for them, you know. Right. And then we ended up having the babies. Yeah, we were at the reunion together, pregnant. pregnant I remember. Two. That's crazy. Yeah. So we were both pregnant. And uh, yeah, and then she ended up having a boy and I had a girl. Yeah, she was so cute because when she came to see me at the hospital, she brought Nicholas and Nicholas brought a flower for Adriana. <laughs> it was so cute. Like, like his always, first girlfriend. Yeah, that's what she, they, she said. She's like, they're going to be boyfriend and girlfriend. It was so cute. Oh my God, Nicholas is adorable. Blonde hair, blue eyes. And it's so funny now, Louis's son is Nicholas and they both have autism. I always, th- you know, I always think about Jack and Nicholas, you know, because he was adorable and I, and I, I heard he's doing really well now, which I'm happy, you know, and and that's another thing. I wish Jacqueline and her filming nothing but the best. But what happened between me and Jacqueline was like really devastated me. And um, when Melissa came on the show, like, I don't know what my sister-in-law said to Caroline and Jacqueline that I don't know what she said to them, whatever. I have no idea. What she said, she, Jacqueline quote said, well, let's just say that she, Melissa, was really good at lying while keeping a straight face and very good at manipulating people. The whole time, Melissa and Joe were in my ear manipulating me, telling me secrets about Teresa, things Teresa would say and do to them, and see a different side of Teresa once Melissa came around. So, yeah, so I have no idea because then I ended up being on an island all by myself and it was like crazy. I didn't understand. And then, anyway, Jacqueline, ended up going against me on the show. I was devastated. I, we went through like a friend's divorce on camera. And um, I really was sad for a while. I mean, Joe could tell you, you know, my ex. And um, yeah, and that was it. But like, 
you know, I heard she, you know, she lives in Vegas. So I wish her, no, you know, nothing but the best and her and her family, her two boys, her CJ. So I, matter of fact, I just saw a recent picture of CJ and Chris on Instagram. Oh my God, he's so handsome. Like, you know, he got so big, you know? Why do you think though she's saying all this now? The, the, all this time has gone by. I have no idea. You tell me. What's your opinion? I mean, I don't know. Listen, your new season is dropping. It's not like she's in Vegas. It's not like she's coming back on the show. Exactly. Like, I think I saw something like like she's thirsty. I don't know. She's not like that. Maybe this is her way of, her roundabout way of, of apologizing to you. Yeah. I mean, listen, maybe, you know, I don't know. I mean, I like never did anything to hurt her in any way. You know, I'm not like that, you know? So, and, you know, I was upset at the time and like when we, you know, we didn't talk anymore. Cause you know, when you, when you talk to someone every single day, like Carlos King could vouch for that. We used to wake up in the morning, be on the phone, like, you know, in the morning and then, then all right, we're like, all right, we got to get ready. We got to film, you know, like that. But we were like inseparable. We really were like, you know, our friendship was pretty special. And Joe. Grace yeah. hung out all the time too. Like we had so many, you know, we had a lot of memories together. But when you see this stuff now, and I know it's been so many years, it's not like you guys are going to become besties again. But now that you see this and it's almost like a Carlos King interview and a Carlos, what Carlos said, it's almost validating everything. What do you think of it now? I wish this all would have came out back then, you know, sometimes I, I'm, like in life, it's like, well, why do we have to go through hard times? You know, I think about that. Like, but like now I've gotten my reasoning. You know, I told you the other day, like I had to go through all everything I had to go through in order to meet Louie. You right now. But me, Leah, like I, I am getting a lot of validation now, which I've been saying now for the past, you know, 10 years. And um, so maybe this is the way this is what it is. Like, it's finally, you know, how, you know, that saying that I guess they don't make sayings just to make them like the truth always eventually does come out. Right. 10. I mean, unfortunately, like you said, for you, it took 10 years, but you know what? We actually even got a listener email about this. Okay. Danielle, not that Danielle, a uh, Danielle emailed yeah. us at namaste B podcast at gmail.com. And she wrote, I would first just say, I love, love, love you. Recently, Jacqueline said in an interview that your brother and Melissa are responsible for the demise of you and her friendship. Do you think if they, Joe and Melissa, didn't lie for all these years, you would still be friends with Jacqueline and Caroline? Yeah. I mean, that's a question you would have to ask Jacqueline because like, yeah, I mean, because I don't understand whatever... Melissa was telling Jacqueline, then Jacqueline turned on me on TV and thought that I was keeping stuff from her, which I wasn't. I mean, now that I've, I've been through it all, I was not keeping anything from her. I didn't understand any of it, all the legal stuff, because I think that's what it was, right? Remember, we were in, in uh, I was at Jacqueline's house, and then she like goes against me on in her backyard. It was at Caroline's house. I can't remember now. In the backyard. But that was the whole point of what Jacqueline was saying. She was like... She's like, it's just over time when someone's just in your ear saying bad things about somebody, eventually you're probably going to listen. And that's what Jacqueline's saying. I did listen. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess obviously, so if she wouldn't have listened, of course we would have still been friends. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we had like, like, I'm, see, this is what you have to understand by me. I never throw the first punch. Like if I'm your friend, I'm your friend for life. Unless yeah. you go against me. And then I'm like, really? Okay. That's, and then it's like. But why wouldn't you punch? Anybody would punch back. If you're going to come at me, I'm going to come back at you. I mean, that's just. Yeah. I mean, and like, if we don't get along, then we just say, listen, this, this is not working. And then you, you know, you just get kind of drift away. But like, yeah, I mean, I've been friends with my friends for a long time. Like a lot of my friends, like I still have high school friends. Yeah. You know, unfortunately in life, Things happen. People get weird. People get jealous. I hate to say that word, but, or they, I don't, it's, it's like, yeah, unfortunately we live in that kind of world that, you know, I've even seen it with Louie happen. Like, you know, people judged him for being with me. It's sad. Like they did. He got judged for being with me, you know, like, you know, we're, you know, his company that we're, you know, he's the founder of like people are, People judge when they don't even know the person. Well, of course, look at what Louis went through. The whole world was judging Louis last right. season. Right. And I can't wait for this season. Everyone's really going to get to know the real Louis. 
And I think they're going to see what he's really about. I mean, to me, I mean, everyone knows how I feel about him, but he's the best son, best father, best stepfather. And then, of course, I need to add best husband. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he, and best friend. Like, he's a, such a good human. He really is. And um, trust me, he's going to be coming out soon and telling his whole story, which I can't wait. But he really is a good human. And, um, and oh, my God, this July will be three years. I'm with him. <laughs> Hey, it's your girl, Kale Lowry, and we're doing a Barely Famous and Vibin' and Kinda Thriving crossover. I invaded Vibin and Vibin's V and Alessandra brought their crazy to Barely Famous. It's a big hot mess in the best way possible. Lots of laughs, lots of stories, and real candid chat about everything. So listen to Barely Famous and Vibin' and Kinda Thriving now at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcasts. I got a new trainer and, um, and I told my trainer, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes too, but then I, I'm the, I'll be the first to say it. You come at me, of course, I'm going to react to you. But then sometimes, of course, you're not going to like the way I react because then I'll be more aggressive. You know, like you see, like I, because I'm like, right. you know, I'm very passionate. I'm like, yeah, some people and some people, they do it very calculated and very strategic and all that. I'm not like that. What you see is what you get with me. I'll tell you what, just how it is. Right. Some people can't take the truth. That's the problem. In, like how I am. And, you know, and some people do it like in a sly way. Well, and it's just the perfect example of what Jacqueline's saying. Some people go behind the back and they do the whispering and they do the chattering. And then some people like you are just direct. Yeah, I'm very. Uh, but anyway, my, let me just tell you guys, get a new trainer. She's freaking awesome. Oh, that's cool. Love her. But I looked at her and, you know, sometimes you get a vibe, you know? And I was like, I don't know if I'm going to like this trainer. Like, I didn't even know her. Right. And then, and the thing is, you have to you have to click with your trainer. You have to click with them. You know, because like, you're with them a lot, right. you know? And um, she's one of the, let me tell you, see? Never judge a book by its cover. See? Even you I'm, do it I'm, sometimes. I'm, I'm, and then you learn. That's what you're saying. And I, I told her today. You know, today I told her. She's one of the best trainers I've ever had in my life. And I'm and like, and trust That's me, I'm, awesome. I'm a, be, you know, I'm very tough. Like, I like results if I don't get them. Like, I like things to happen quick, 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 quick. Like, you know, that's how I am with everything in life. And if I don't see it, then because I'm like hard on myself like that. You know, that's why I'm like, I guess, you know, I'm very, I'm a strong person. Like, but like, I like to see results. That's my point. Anyway, I told her that today. I said to her, I just want you to know you're like one of the best trainers I've ever had. And I said, when I first met you, uh, I said, you know, I wasn't sure. I was like, you know, I don't know if I want to like this girl, you know? And um, I said, I'll be honest with you. And I, and she looked at me and I think she appreciated. I said, you're like amazing. And I wanted, I wanted her to know. I didn't have to That's tell awesome. her that because, but I wanted her to of know course. she's amazing. And I like the way I feel and she's doing things that nobody's ever done. And I said, see, and I said, just like me, people judge me and they don't know me and they judge me. Everybody judges. I was just talking to somebody or someone sent me an email or a message or something. They all judge. They think I'm just like this California blonde chick that just like popped up in California and started just like this podcast with you. Like nobody know. Everybody judges me like this. I'm not even freaking from well, that's California. That's let people know more about you. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's tough sometimes talking about it because people don't know. But, you know, I'm from Ohio. You know, I'm not born and bred in, in California. I'm from Ohio, played sports my whole life. I was supposed to go to college playing on a basketball scholarship, but I busted my knees. I had multiple knee surgeries. But I knew I wanted to do something in sports. And that's ultimately what took me out to California. I wanted to be, if I couldn't play sports, I wanted to be like a broadcaster, like on TV doing sports broadcasting. And that's ultimately what took me out to California. But like, again, born and bred in Ohio, I've only been, I've been in California about 10 years. And when I got out to California, which is another thing that kind of came up recently, you know, stuff about my past. Like what? Stuff, other stuff has come up about my past because on Side Piece, you know, the other podcast, I had Taylor yes, Armstrong. Yes, yes. Remember Taylor? So she was the one that was the OG right. on Beverly Hills. And yes. she's the first housewife, you know, to ever cross over franchises. 
she started on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills when it first started. And now she just filmed with Real Housewives of Orange County. Yes. Now I remember. Now, yes, I totally remember. And it was the first season. And her yes. husband is the one that yes. committed suicide, which was like the biggest shakeup probably ever that had hit with yeah. a Real Housewives when Bravo was just starting out. And then it came out. Camille actually came out on the show and outed Taylor because Taylor was also like really abused by her husband. Oh, okay. Like verbally and physically okay. abused. Yeah. I think I vaguely remember that. Oh, wow. That's sad. Wait, because, because what, because Camille and Taylor were really close and that's how she knew because Taylor would tell her everything. I think everybody knew and Taylor was just trying to keep it a secret because that's not really a thing that you want to put out right. there. And this is like when reality TV is just starting, like Housewives has just right. started. Like, you know, we hadn't been through the shit show of all this chaos of, of housewife stuff. Like this was brand new. So I think to protect her family, to protect herself, to protect her husband. And she had a five, four or five year old daughter at that time. Right. I think she was just trying to keep it a secret. And then Camille on camera outed the whole thing. Oh. Like, we don't say that he hits you and like, oh, all wow. Stuff. Okay. And so it came out. So that was when Taylor first started Housewives. I just had Taylor on side piece talking with her. And I did not, I wanted to talk about Beverly Hills and how that was being the OG of Beverly Hills. I wanted to talk about her transition to another franchise, right. how it was with Tamra and like that whole crew doing OC. And then she's, we, somehow we started talking about the abuse that she went through from her husband who yeah, killed himself yes. on the show. And she's like talking about it and like getting into a story. And I was like, I get it. And you know how like some people are talking and you're always just like, you say, I get it, but like, you don't get it. You're just, that's just kind of like a saying. Right, right, right. And she looked at me like, okay, I'm sure. I'm sure you get it. And I looked at her and I said, no, like I get it. And she was like, huh? And then like, I've never talked about it ever. Like, my heart is racing right now. No, but it's okay because you could help other women out there, you know? You're getting emotional, okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah. No, it's good. Like, I know I need to talk about this. It's just my, I can't, my heart's racing. Okay. So, anyway. So, like, I was like, no, I, I get it, Taylor. That's so sad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for Taylor, too, that had to go through that, you know? Yeah, and I think that's why, because it's like, it wasn't just like this, like, passing comment that I made. Because, you know, again, the judging, back to this whole long story that I was getting to, this the judging, right? Like, no one knows my backstory. So I left Ohio. I left that, like, friends, family, job, everything. Because, again, I'm like you. Like, I want to do things. I'm a go-getter. I want to try new things. So I just left everything. I literally quit my job. I left my family, friends, everything I knew. And I moved out to California because I knew I wanted to do more. I wanted to do some kind of TV sports broadcasting. That was my goal, right. my dream. Well, in the process of it, I was with a guy. I started dating a guy. I didn't know anybody in California. Nobody, nobody. I was only li living off of savings. I was in medical sales. I made a ton of money not a ton, but like I made enough or 20, whatever to come out and try to start a right. new life. And I started dating a guy and everything was amazing. Like I was super in love with him. And then, you know, the, the you start peeling the onion back. Right. And shit got real. And he, at first it was just like the verbal, like my name wasn't Melissa anymore to him. It was bitch or C-U-N-T. Oh my like God. That was I'm just getting it. the chills as you're saying this, like all over my body. That's it. All day, every day. That's all. Like, that's the only thing I ever heard. Like that was my name to him, my names. And then, and then like, that's when abuse started. It just kind of escalated. It just was like a shove or, you know, a, a push, something, right? Like grabbing my arm or grabbing my hair. And then it just got worse and worse. And so when I was talking to Taylor, that's why I was like, I get it. Right. Like, yeah, I've been there. I've, 
you know, and, and people always like, how did you let that happen? And it's like, you know, people think I'm like the strong chick, right? And I don't take shit and all this stuff. And so when people are like, how did you let that happen? It, it's almost like, I feel like it's a knock on me. Like I'm weak. I'm no, I mean, I, you were obviously, were you living with the guy? We were living together. Yeah. And that's the thing. You get trapped and you're scared. And I, like even people in marriages, they stay because they're scared, especially if you're getting abused, like you're scared, like he's going to kill me. You know, like, how am I going to get away from this guy? Like, what, you know, yeah, you're, you're terrified. It was, it was because like, I was worried about that. My like physical safety, right. You know, California ain't cheap. Right. So then the money, when you're trying to get job and you're trying to get work and it's the money isn't really coming in much and you're living off of savings, you know, financially, I mean, Teresa, I remember I would have no gas in my gas tank and I would literally go to the gas station and put just $5 in it and hope that would just make me to wherever I needed to go because I had no money. Like I literally, my savings was going, I had no money. I was like, what do I do? And like Taylor, I didn't want to tell my family and friends that this was going on because I really loved this guy and I wanted to make it work. And I thought it was going to work. I thought I was going to be married. You were trying to fix the red flags. Like he's going to change, right? Right. He's going to change. Like, yeah, no, somebody does not change. Like if somebody's like that, then yeah, obviously they don't change. And, and then how what happened? Like, how'd you get away from him? Well, but then when you're in it and you're so blinded by love and blinded, I know you don't want to tell, you don't want to tell your, the people close to you negative things because then they won't like them. So I kept my mouth shut to everybody. I understand. And the only person that found out was a neighbor who lived, I was in an apartment complex and he lived on the floor above me and he came by one day and he saw like, I had like a sprained ankle. <gasps> oh my I had bruises. God. And he was like, what is Wait, happening? Because well, he would hear you guys fighting? No, he just came by to like say oh, hi one okay, day. Okay. And my ex was gone and I was like hobbling around. And normally I wouldn't even answer the door, but for some reason I did. And at that point I made a suitcase, like a small little suitcase like yeah. my just in case bag. Oh my god! Hey, wait, like, you sound like that movie. There's a movie out there with oh my god, with like was it sleeping with the enemy? She's trying to get away from him when then she and she just probably yeah. I mean, I literally then gave him a bag and I was like, in case it comes to that point and I have to like just I can just crawl up the stairs to you. At least I have a little bag and that's like my yes, yes, all I yes. need. And it was just you know I remember meeting Josh. And I had to meet him somewhere and I was like hobbling and he's like, what happened? I was like, oh, I was like running. I was working out and I, you know, busted, you know, I hit you, you just hide it. You hide it from everybody because you're embarrassed. You feel weak. Yeah. You know, it, it was I just, have, yeah. It, so it was, it was bad. It was really bad for a while. No, I remember, I mean, I just, it's a little bit relating. Like I remember my first boyfriend that I dated for six years. Like we would constantly break up and get back, break up and get, and he was like a cheat. He was cheating on me. Yeah. He was my first boyfriend. And, you know, I was like, I really thought I really loved him. So I always like, would, then he would like make me, make me think and like mess with my head and be like, well, we were broken up. So that's why I went with another girl. The mind games. Yeah, mind, the mind games. games. So it's like, then I would take him back, but I wouldn't tell my family we broke up because I didn't want them not to like him. Of and course. I didn't want them to know what the kind of mind games he was playing with me. That's why. I was so, I've never been into cheating because he like messed yeah. with me so bad and was such a cheater. And I, then afterwards I found out so much crazy shit that I was like, wow. And I was like, I'm never going to deal with cheating ever again. And the thing is, cause he was playing mind games with me. And that's why I was just like, if you're not, if you cheat on a person, I mean, you, you should not be with that person. So it's like, get out of it, you know? But again, it's hard. It's listen, it's easy to say when you're on the outside. Exactly. And I went in you know, and I was with him six years. Like that was six years. Of, like the long game. time. Yes. Cause like you think. I know I was four years. So it's not a, you're just like, you've been so long with somebody. You were in love with them. I thought I was going to marry this guy. Like I thought this was my future and I had not, I literally had nothing else. No friends, no nothing. I was all the way across the country in California by myself. Right. And then, and then how, what happened? How'd you get away? You know what? I don't even know how I finally just left. I, I, you know, in, in the meantime, 
oh, that's another reason why I stayed. I kept staying because I was like, I'm in California. Everyone I'm meeting are just like douchey. Who am I going to find here? Like, this is the best I'm going to get anyway. I'm not going to find anyone better. Oh my God, you've never settled. Never settled. <laughs> I know. But, you know, and when you're in it, everything yeah, is no, just- I have, Trust me, I understand. I, I get You have it. no money. You have nothing. Everyone you're meeting, you're like, ugh, I'm not going to ever meet right. anybody else. I'm going to be single forever unless I make this work, unless I stay. No, this is good because I'm sure there's other women out there that are hearing yeah. this. It's like, you know, I if you're in it, please get out of it. Try, you know? And we just, for Thanksgiving, we fed a domestic violence charity. And I don't think we even talked about this. You yeah, know, it's, it's very hard. I should, trust me, I get it. Like, it's not something, look, you got so emotional. I felt so bad. It's like, yeah. It's, and it's a dark, it's something dark in your past that you don't want to remember. You want to forget about it, you know? And, um, but it, you know, it's, I'm glad you did talk about it because I know it's hard, but you're helping. I'm sure you're going to help somebody else that, are, you know, yeah. God willing, listens to our podcast and gets out because there's a lot of women that stay for the, you know, because of that. And they think that there's nothing else. And, and if anything, especially when you're around children that see this, that's even oh worse. That was, a, you know, I always said that that was a saving grace. Thankfully we weren't married and thank God we had no children because that still would have yeah, because you then know. what are you teaching your kids if you're staying around that? It's terrible. You need to get out, you know, and, and just leave everything like that. Like get a suitcase and be out. Like that's it. And don't be scared because, listen, no matter how bad you crash, you're always going to get back up. Yeah. Well, it's it's just hard to see when you're in it. Like you said, the the thing, he would always come home and something would happen in his life, like something didn't go well with his job or something didn't go well with his family. And of course I would get it, literally get it in every way. And then he would turn it after he did what he did. He After he threw a glass at my face or he punched, hit, whatever, threw me around, it would be, you did this. You made me so mad that I didn't do well in my job. You made me so mad oh that God. I had a fight with my yes, family. Yeah. You, in general, just, you're a whore. You're a slut. You're a bitch. I mean, I heard that all the time. What a whore I was. What a slut I was. Because I started making these, like, cooking shows. Right. You can be a whore doing these cooking shows. What? I started making oh in my, my God. You're I, trying to work. These little YouTube. You know? Yeah, totally. I was just trying to do anything, anything to get work and to get money so I could have a leg to stand on and get the fuck out. Yeah. So literally I bought it. I taught myself how to edit. I bought a Mac. I bought with the money I had on eBay, Craigslist. Like I bought a little tripod. I bought a little camera and I would make these because I knew sports and I knew cooking and I would make these little cooking videos in my little studio apartment just to be like, Hey, I'm good on camera, sports people, just anything, Teresa, just yeah, anything. Yeah, no, that's, that's amazing. Got to hustle. Yeah, no, that's amazing. But I was a whore for doing it. And I was like this and I was a slut. I mean, it was, it was the names. It was around the clock. And by the way, if it was just the names, I would be able to take it. It's just, it would always escalate and it got worse and it yeah, worse. No, and worse. hitting. Oh my God. That's. Like, that's no bueno. Like, that's no good. Like, that's, ter that's, I'm sorry you had to go through that. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I think the last straw was I was in the kitchen and I said something that he didn't like and he charged me and he grabbed me by the neck and he put me against the cupboard and I was like, no, this is it. And then, and then what happened? How'd you get, like, what'd you do after that? Just think you're helping I'm sorry. It's I know. just crazy because people are like, you know, you're this like blonde, rich, preppy bitch from California, right? That I just like appeared and I had money or I appeared and I was doing this podcast or I just like poof, like this stuff happens, right? Like I've been here 10 years, literally working my ass off in my little studio apartment trying to make videos just to like find a way out, literally to find a way out in that same studio apartment. I was making the videos. That's how I started my business, my baked goods business. Yeah. All of a sudden I'm making these banana breads, these healthy banana breads. And from that, try like my only way of doing it was trying to get a way out. 
And those breads. I'm, I'm still trade. waiting for that banana bread, by the way. But. <laughs> I know. I know. But that's my business. That but started tell there. Tell everybody what was the name of it. It was called Naked Feast. Feaster, my last name, Naked. Because, you know. Yeah, I love that. Remember, I'm a slut and a whore. So you have to be naked. <laughs> so, but that bread in that business, again, only doing it to try to find a way out is one. what then got me into like 30 coffee shops around LA. Got me into Whole Foods. I got one on Delta Airlines. And that, again, it was just all just scraping by to find a way out. That's amazing. And literally the only people that knew was my neighbor above. And then Josh, I had met him in the process, not as like a dating right, thing. Right. Like someone was like, I know this great guy in the entertainment world. You want to do sports broadcasting. He's amazing. He's not a douche. You should meet him. And I met Josh and it was just like a friendly thing. And at one yeah, point, I remember, I remember you said you didn't like Josh. At first. Yeah. yeah, no, I was like, this is not my dude. Yeah, like, like not- he's cool. <laughs> he's too short for me. Like he comes up to my boobs. <laughs> I, like he is not my dude. But I remember I was so, I felt so trapped. Wait, that's how I felt about Joe, by the way. When I met Joe, I'm like, he's too short for me. And my dad was a shoe repair, true shoe repair guy, you know, fixed shoes. Yeah. So I made my dad cut all my heels so I, so he would be taller than me. I swear to God, that was the only deal breaker with Joe. I'm like, he's too short. I'm like, this is not going to happen. And then I got over that, obviously, because then we got married, had four kids. <laughs> See, look at that. See? I know. I was like, maybe this works out well, because you're just like nuzzling right there. In right. The <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I remember going at one point and he was he was so just like supportive and helpful. Oh. And j- again, just as a yeah, friend. Yeah. Uh, but he's the only one that he's the only second person. My family. I mean, listen, if my family's listening right now, 90, probably all of them don't know any of this story. None. I think in passing, I was like, you know, he was really abusive, wow, that, but that's we never, really powerful like, I, for you to share with I never everyone. ever sat down with a parent, with a sister, with a friend and like had this conversation. Well, um, I love ever. you. Thanks for having me. With I me. love you. You know, and I know, I know it's hard, but trust me, I'm sure you're helping somebody out there. And, you know, and I feel like same, same thing with me, everything that I've been through, you know, I hit rock bottom, but then I got myself up. So if anybody's going through that between my story and Melissa's story, hopefully we could help pick you up and, and help you. And, you know, cause listen, there's always a way out. Don't ever think that it's a not, way out you know, like, like you, like, see, you were thinking there wasn't. So you and Taylor definitely related. and then. Like, what was her, her um, reaction to what you were telling her? She was, I mean, she was shocked. And again, I had zero right, intentions. Right, right. By the way, when I do interviews, it's not about me. It's about them. Right. right? That was powerful. But it was just that, like, I get it. And she was like, yeah, sure. And it just took a, it took a, a completely different path than I was ever expecting it to. And then I got off with her and I was like, that was such a great conversation. It was very difficult. But then I was like, I don't want that to air. Like, I don't want that to come out. Like I'm not ready yet, but then I get these messages and I'm talking to you. It's like, look at what you've been through going to jail, hitting rock bottom, all this stuff. It's like you put yourself out there and yeah, don't be afraid. Cause you know what? Just think about able to do that because by you doing this, you're helping somebody else. No, no, I swear most like you are. I get messages all the time. Thank you so much. You inspired me. And, and that, makes me feel good. Cause I'm like, Oh God, I'm, I inspired that person. Cause like, I was really sad when all this happened to me, but I was like, I was thinking about my kids at the time. I was like, I can't let them down. And that's what kept me going. So, but other people out there, if I could inspire them, if you could inspire them, if we could help them. Oh my God. It means, it means it's like everything. It's everything. Yeah. So that's why we're going, you know, that's why the best, we, that's why we were putting, that's why the two of us were put on this we're platform to do this. I really believe that. I really do believe that. I believe it too. And I've always said, even with the baked goods business, people in like, when I would do my little demos, uh, people would be like, why did you start this? And I'm like, cause I want to help people. Even if it's just someone that has a gluten allergy and they have a nice, delicious meal, a kid that has a nice, delicious banana bread that they can eat. And it's good. It's helping people to feel better. I've always wanted just to help people. And that's why I started my business. That's why I'm doing this with you. That's why I started stripped. That's why I became a nutritionist. So I could really help people 
with their happiness, with their weight, just feeling good all around. And then I'm like, wait a minute. And now Teresa and I are doing this and I'm not going to talk about things that are maybe difficult yeah. for me, but that could help no, somebody. And seriously, and that's, that's why, insane. listen, that's why like, this that's came why out right now. That's why we're here to do this. Like it is for you to, I'm telling you, definitely help somebody today. Yeah, or maybe a few. And then, and that's why you look so amazing and you have a body like that because you're a nutritionist. You know exactly what to eat. So that's why if anybody makes fun <laughs> of her body or has anything to say, are you kidding me? Oh my God, I feel her abs. Like I want abs like that. Yes, I do. I'm getting abs like <laughs> you. That's why she, you know, she's helping me with my nutrition. And that's why, yeah, that's why you look beautiful. And look, Josh loves you just the way you are. So do I. I love touching you. I, <laughs> yes, I love your body. I know. I miss oh, you like, touching my boobs and my butt. Awesome. Like I need you know, to see you. People, you know, it's like, <laughs> stop, judging. You. stop, stop. It's a bad, it's a poor quality. Yes. It's the judging. And listen, we're only human. We all do it. Like, look, I, I admitted it to my trainer this morning. I'm like, I didn't think right. I was going to like you. And I just want you to know you're the best trainer I've ever, like one of the best trainers I've ever had. And like, she, I, my body feels better with her. And like, she's awesome. I just wanted her. And she has two kids too, two little kids. She got, um, had kids later in life. She had um, her first kid at 38. She did in vitro. So it was rough for her, you know, and I, and I commend women that do in vitro because I know you, and you did that too, right? Mm-hmm. Liz? Yeah. I be yeah. And it's like your body goes through so I, yeah, much and I yeah. like, I commend any woman that's going through that. And, um, listen, there's a reason why God created that. Cause you know, t- so you guys could have babies, but that's a strong woman that has to go through that too. Cause it's, it's a lot on your body, you know? mentally, physically, totally. everything. Yeah. I mean, but that's, it goes back. Like, just don't judge. Don't judge a trainer. Don't judge Teresa. Don't judge me. Don't judge people. And if you, you do, you no it's idea. nice to tell the person, listen, listen, I, I'm i sorry, you know, because then you know what? It does makes you feel better that, you know, because listen, we're not perfect. None of us are, you know, we all, you know, we all make mistakes. We all we say stupid things, but you know, it's always sometimes if, to let that person know, listen, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. You know, it's okay to say sorry. Cause you know, we all have our off days. <laughs> well, listen, thank you for that. Brought this whole conversation up. I wasn't expecting this either, but thank you for letting me talk about that and share thank the story you for sharing that with us. And how did it, and then how did you and Taylor end? Um, I mean, now she, we text like all the time. It's just like uh, something that like connected so us. That's a total like, uh, yeah. And you guys bonded over that. Yeah. How's she doing? Great. Good. She's great. She is. You know, made it oh, to the good. other side. She's remarried. She's happy. That's so good. And now she's going to be on OC. So we'll see her on Rural Housewives of Orange County. Oh my God. Let's see. And that's amazing. See, there's, that's why there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. Never think that. Like, I never thought I was ever going to get married again. Swear to God. Like, I never in a million years. Like, get mad. Like, first of all, I thought I was going to be with Joe forever. And then to find Louie and it's like, like, he's really my soulmate. It's like, I'm like, wow. There's light know? at the end of the tunnel, you guys. There's light. So, yes. Yeah, so never give Between up. Teresa and I, we have been through a lot. So you guys just know, you know, you always listen to somebody that has been through things, right? Like if I am an alcoholic, I'm going to listen to somebody who is also an alcoholic because they've been through it and they know. So if right. anyone is listening to this podcast, just know that Therese and I have been through it. We're speaking from experience and we can tell you that no matter how difficult it may be, there is a way out and you're not alone. And if you need our help, please email us. We would love to help you. You know, of course, we'll, obviously you're not going to give, you know, give us your real name. That's fine. But ask us any questions like we could help you. Please, you know, reach out. You're not alone. Definitely not. So you're not alone, you guys. Thank you, as always, to everyone for listening. Again, you're not alone. You can call us and email us anytime. We are here. We are always listening. We want to hear from you. Just in case you forgot, that number again is 424-241-0410. And our email is podcast at gmail.com. You guys, thank you. This took a turn I wasn't expecting. Um, Thank you for listening. It's okay. You know, Teresa and I love 
We love doing this together. We love hanging out together. And we love doing this for you guys, especially. This is why we do it. So thank you for tuning in, for your support, for your love. And for tuning in every single Wednesday. Don't forget you guys also, because this was such a upbeat, a positive. <laughs> Don't forget to follow, rate, and review Namaste Bitches wherever you get your podcasts. You can also follow us on Instagram. That's at Namaste Bitches Pod. Teresa, where can they find your beautiful face? You could find me at Teresa Judice. And I am at Melissa Feaster. You guys, thank you for everything. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you, Melissa. I love you. I love you. We love, love, love you guys. We love you guys.